Hey everyone, hope everyone is doing well. Um, today we're going to focus on the Playlist app. So essentially today I just want you to sit back, kind of watch this, and take away from understanding uh, obviously how to add a playlist, but more importantly just sort of understanding the, the capabilities and, and some of the functions with, within there. So looking at this layout here, the playlist, what I'm referring to, is this middle part right here, right, where it's showing sort of the Saturday Night Live. Um, there was obviously a clip before that. And so the playlist app is obviously pulling your, your playlist here, right? So how does it work, right? So you have Media Library. That's sort of your, your cloud base of, of content where you're uploading, you know, assets or, or using our system to, to create stuff. And then essentially you're creating a playlist. Now you can have one playlist, you can have multiple playlists, right? Uh, there's no restriction on that. When you create a playlist, you're obviously going to the media library and you're adding those assets to the playlist. Once that's established, so as you can see, here's a list of my playlist here. Right? I have an internal marketing, tells me sort of my total count, when it was created and, and sort of so on. Um, once I have this playlist, our final step is to put it to a layout, right? Um, assign it to, to a zone since that's how our system works. And so we'll go back into sort of my layout editor here, and then I'll just click on the first one right here. It's just called or Arrow Corporation. And again, I, I would create a zone, right? Now you can put this playlist wherever you want. Um, big thing to sort of keep in mind is when we're dealing with content and when we want it to display and look good, we want to make sure that our zone is staying at what we call a 16-9 ratio. So what that means is that when it's not at a 16-9 ratio, you're going to have black bars on the left and on the right. And so when we create our zone, we really want to make sure that the content is filling up the entire space. And how you sort of do that math or sort of how you figure that out, and I'll kind of build this with you from scratch, is essentially you just hit new zone. And again, just kind of call it what it is. It's a playlist. Now, I already know 1280 by 720 is a 16-9 ratio, so I'll start there. And I'm going to hit enter that in. I'm going to hit OK. All right, so that looks good. Good, but I kind of want to line it up, you know, with my schedule, like right where this sort of blue box is. And so I'm just going to eyeball this, right? I have no idea. I'm not like grabbing it, you know, in a perfect ratio here. But I'm just going to eyeball in it to match that the top of that blue line there. So what I'm going to do is you can go to Google and you literally just type in 16-9 ratio. So all you need to do, it's this is the very first one on the Google calendar, or on, I'm sorry, on the Google uh, search. And what you'll do is you'll just type in the width. So the width right now is 1390. So 1390. And by myself entering that width, it spits out exactly what that height needs to be. So 782, which was pretty close. So I'll just kind of make that adjustment there. All right, so now this is a 16-9 ratio. And so that's really, really important to sort of understand when we're sort of, again, adding a playlist app and, and pulling from assets from there. All right, so once I have this established, I'm like, okay, this looks great. I went on the left side here. Now I need to add essentially the app. So I'll double click in, I'll hit add app, and then I will choose playlist, which is in the second row right here. Uh, this app, for the most part, is, is pretty easy. There's not a lot of configuration going with it, so it is pretty uh, uh, simple. But essentially, you'll create, you'll collect the playlist settings, and then you'll select your, your playlist. So I'm going to select internal just because I know that one has assets to run and there's content in there. Override background, I'm going to skip for a sec. I'll just explain that to you in just a second. And then we have shuffle. So what that means is your playlist, right, has a list of items, and it's going to play it in order, you know, asset one, asset two, asset three. What if you say, hey, you know what, I don't want that to happen. I just want it to be sort of random. Then you can sort of en enable that. Um, also, too, we do have some clients who have video or, or YouTube, and there's no way they can really turn off those, those videos. So we can just mute the entire playlist. That means that no video whatsoever will, will play sound. All right, so let's play this and see some of the assets, and then I'll sort of dig into what this override background is. So we'll hit OK, and then we'll hit Preview. All right, so as you can see, everything is, is starting to cycle through, everything obviously from my playlist here. Um, so let's talk about that override background and that playlist setting, and really the next part here you're going to see. All right, so just kind of remember this as I talk about this override part. So what this means, and I'm going to come back into this playlist here, and I'm going to just change this to a very, very bright color. Okay, we'll change it to yellow. So what this does is if you use our back-end 
platform. So in the media library, right, there's a lot of ways you can add content and create content, right? You can use Canva, you can continue to use Adobe products, right? Um, if you use PowerPoints, or you have different ways to create PDFs or Excel files, right? There's so many different, you know, softwares out there that allow you to create content, and that's completely fine. Now, in our system, though, we also provide a backend as well, it's called an announcement tool. You can sort of refer to it as a like a paint pro if that's if that's a better way of of understanding what it is. Um, but in our announcements, there is a way where when you create stuff, you might not have a background. So let's just kind of dig into this one just because I'm a visual learner, and so just explain this better to you. So remember this announcement? It was just a black square, and I told you I was like, remember that. So when you're in our backend platform and you're creating stuff, and, and again, maybe you're adding some text over here, um, and you forget to, again, here's some just some dummy text, you forget to add a background essentially. So as you saw when I said remember this, it showed just like the background, right? It was very transparent. Now that override background color, what that does is that will provide the color for you. So... That's kind of nice because, you know, obviously if you're trying to fit to branding and maybe you just have some basic users and you're like, oh my gosh, like they're always going to forget to add the color. Like I'll just, you know, I'll train them just to keep it transparent. What you could do is just put that branding color in the background and then any announcement like this that they create with no background is always just going to have that default color. So I'll go ahead and save this and then we'll re-preview it so I can show you the difference here. So I'm going to say save. All right, so here's the first asset, and now watch the second one, right? The second one I didn't have, you know, I didn't put a background into it. And so you'll see that it's going to have this, yep, see how it's like a very bright yellow background. So that's sort of the purpose of it. And, and again, you know, pros and cons, if you want to use it or not, especially if you do have generic users, it is nice to just put your branding color right in here and then just tell your generic user like, hey, don't worry about, you know, adding a background, like, you know, it'll just automatically have it. Um, so that's kind of the purpose of, of that override background. So that sort of wraps up, obviously, our sort of walkthrough or tutorial today. Um, if you guys have any questions, of course, definitely give us a call or email us. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you.